All right, Matt and Nick, thank you so much for joining us and Absolutely. hosting us here at Concordia. Uh, once again, I know you guys for now almost uh, almost five years, yeah. and what an incredible period of growth from year five when I first joined you to today, uh, year nine. Talk about some of those mile markers uh, and achievements since year five until now. Yeah, so we started actually um, in 2011 with about a summit of 120 people, half of which were our friends or family. Um, and, uh, you know, this is our year nine. Year five was about uh, one or 2,000 people. This year we have about 4,500 people confirmed. So it's grown uh, exponentially. Um, I think the quality has also grown with it, which is something that uh, we have uh, really uh, had a close focus on. We didn't want to just have a larger summit, we wanted to have a better summit. Um, I think Matt's going to talk a little bit about the uh, international programs that we have, but in terms of the annual summit, this one is by far our biggest, it's our most inclusive. I think it is the most inclusive summit on the sidelines of the UNGA. We've got presidents, we've got prime ministers, we've got uh, CEOs, but we've also got students, entrepreneurs, uh, and just people who are interested in the topic. Um, so. What I was impressed with from day one was the access that everybody has here. It's sort of a, a full court press access, and you don't often find that at a lot of summits, and I think Concordia is the exception to the rule on that. So I applaud you in that, and it's one of the things I constantly point out to folks, get down there, be part of it, from student on forward to expert in your field. Absolutely. But you've also expanded now to the Americas agenda, yes. and of course to Europe, the of EU course. agenda. Yeah, no, of course, over the last five years we've launched two regional initiatives. Uh, one, Concordia Americas, which is headquartered out of Colombia in Bogota, and then the other, which started with a summit we held in Athens, Greece, uh, and then most recently a summit in, in Spain, in Madrid. Um, and then our third regional initiative, which was announced last year by the president of Rwanda, Paul Kagame, is our Africa initiative. We haven't done a summit yet on the continent, but that's our third regional initiative as well. Talk about each of these agendas briefly, sure. of what instigated which one when, yeah. and what were some of the goals and mile markers coming out of those? Well, our first regional initiative, the Americas Initiative, I think was really born from a, a growing community of people from Latin America who started participating in our annual summit. Uh, we had a number of former heads of state from the region on our board from the very beginning. Um, and so all of a sudden this community started to grow and to be completely frank I think it's a part of the world that we don't talk about enough and so there was a real need. Um, Europe I think uh, the EU has been going through so much there's been so much change in Europe especially over the last decade um, that what we really saw was an important opportunity with our first summit in Greece to elevate Greece at a time when it wasn't just in a recession frankly it was in a depression and so we wanted to highlight uh, all that is great about Greece to the international business and political community uh, to pay more attention to what was happening there. So really, it's, it's, it's not some 25-year strategy or, or some secret plan we all have. It's really based on where we see the most need and, and where we think we can add the most value. Well, I have to say, so much of the conversation sidebar and on some of the main stages, uh, also focusing on China, yes, certainly the political arena here in, in the States. Are we thinking down the road we might see a Concordia Summit in China? Could be, for sure. Uh, I don't know yet. Um, but yes, we are talking a lot about U.S.-China relations. I mean, you, you can't have an international summit and not talk about U.S.-China relations. Um, and so it, it's going to be really interesting to see. As I said, we go to places where we think we can add the most value. If, uh, if Asia and if China um, is, is that place, then you'll see us there. You also this year, I have to say, what resonates throughout the halls is the U.N. 2030 agenda. Obviously, we're 10 years away. Yep. It, that's going to go by in a heartbeat, as most uh, philanthropists know, as most business people know. That's really basically two planning cycles right there. So much of what you're addressing is in alignment with that. Let's talk a little bit about how important and how much extra relevance that has thrown in, into the summit. Sure. So I think, listen, uh, we're here in New York during uh, the UNGA week. Anyone who uh, tries to get anywhere in New York can tell you that. It's, uh, you know, it's the center of the world during these weeks. And there's so much going on and so much media attention on everything that uh, I think the way we look at it is to try to uh, carve out our own uh, niche. Um, you know, you see everyone around town wearing these pins. I think you're wearing one. Um, and, you know, for us, these are critical elements. And obviously, 
we as Concordia can't do everything or anything or, or you know a majority to assist in these 30 elements. What we do is take a few of them and really look at ways we can during the, this week, during this time, and also during throughout the year um, have, a, have an impact. But it's certainly critically important. Well, Concordia has always been about P3s and the action that P3s can truly be, bring forth probably better than any individual entity working together. I don't know if you saw today's headline, but after a rather disappointing climate summit at the UN yesterday, it really seems like P3s are gonna be that critical mass that are gonna be able to move things forward, move the agenda forward. Address that. No, I mean, first of all, I think that's what we've been talking about since our founding. And I think that there is a very critical role for the private sector. The thing that we need to be careful of is any kind of division or lack of communication between sectors on these issues um, because the private sector can be a tremendous force for good and by the way you have an enormous gap in resources that are committed to achieving the goals by 2030. I don't know that I see a lot of countries around the world where there is the political will to dramatically increase funding on that side. I don't know that there's enough on the private sector, but there certainly needs to be more. The big question is, are, are there going to be more, and I'll use this example we use all the time, are there gonna be more Unilevers in the world, right? Are there gonna be more companies that really align themselves to the different goals and that do their part because it can do, have an enormous impact, especially in the space of climate, by the way. That, there's no question there that the private sector is critical to it. So I'm not that surprised that people might have been disappointed by the reception from world leaders, all of whom are in varying uh, are political arenas where, frankly, a lot is going on in the world. So Yeah, you mentioned the success and really the forward-thinking nature yeah. of Unilever yeah. on, on every issue from yeah. nutrition, yeah. Uh, uh, hygiene, yeah. and, of course, then ecology. Yeah. We're going to be talking to them later as well. I have to say, though, you've been actually to see over the years, we're coming up on year 10 very soon, you yeah. really have proof in the pudding of how those P3s have stepped forward and you've awarded them, you've recognized them. There is a, a metrics here at this Absolutely. point. We, we, uh, we were very excited on Sunday night at our opening. We announced the, this new partnership between the Global Fund and MasterCard, um, which we're very, very excited about. Uh, those kind of public-private partnerships that we're trying to build, that's, that's very much what we want to see happening all over the place. I would close with just hopes for a 10-year anniversary, as I mentioned, coming up uh, in year. two years, next year. Next year yeah. So that's, that's a yep. big milestone. Yep. Plans, anything you can tip us off to now. So I think what we're going to be doing over the next year is saying, okay, we've gotten to 10 years. How do we reinvent ourselves to stay relevant, to stay innovative, to be different, and to not stay the same? Uh, that is the critical element that Matt and I want to uh, accomplish. Uh, to We started out wanting that, and we've achieved it in many ways, not achieved it in some ways. And so this is a perfect opportunity for us to reevaluate and you know take the next 10 years and, and really create that difference that we started out hoping for in the beginning. Well, I have to say I'm amazed. I've seen it each year grow yeah. when you really thought it couldn't grow yeah. much beyond where you hit that year. And I want to wish you continued success and really we applaud your efforts Thank at the you. FBA and celebrate them with Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.